A DC to DC buck converter is a circuit that steps down the input voltage while it increases the output current. A buck converter is the most common and widely used circuit topology in the electronic devices. By providing a good input source, you can use this circuit as a powerful switching power supply. This circuit provides both constant voltage CV and constant current CC features. Two LEDs show the CV and CC status. You can adjust the voltage from 1.2 to 30 volts and limit the current in the range of 0 to 7 amps. Even you can adjust the current in the milliamps range. In this example, the input voltage is 5. However, the current has been limited to 20 milliamps that protects the LED. The board is compact and easy to build and use. To design the schematic and PCB, I used Altium Designer 21 and IPC rated Sumaxis component libraries. To get high quality fabricated boards, I sent the Gerbers to PCB way. To test the circuit, I used Siglent SDS2102X plus oscilloscope SDS1104XE oscilloscope and Siglent SDL1020 DC load. Isn't cool? So let's get started. All right, this is the schematic document in Altium, which offers a professional and user-friendly environment. I highly recommend you to use a valid license because illegal copies are full of bugs. I did not have the schematic symbols and PCB footprints for the majority of components. So I used the Symaxis Altium plugin and installed the missing libraries. The procedure is quite easy. Just open the plugin, search for the component, and install it. All libraries are free. For example, let's search and install the library of MCP6002 OPAMP. Except for Altium, all of these electronic designing CAD software are also supported. I have described everything in more detail in the article, so just visit the article link in the YouTube video description. So as you see the library of MCP6002 was installed and everything is ready, even the 3D view. Now let's talk about the PCB. This is a two layers PCB board and it contains a mixture of SMD and through hole components. The same as this design, I recommend you move the power lines and I.O. connectors to one edge of the PCB board. Let's turn on the single layer view and watch the board. As you see, I use two polygons as a ground plane and strengthen the connection using via stitching. This is also a good EMC practice, of course with some design rules consideration. The 3D view is useful for design and components placement inspection. Alright, welcome to the test bench. I have prepared all necessary connections to the board from the power supply and the DC load. I decided to use the Siglent SDS2102X Plus oscilloscope because its bigger screen makes it easy to show the waveforms and it also offers the power analysis feature. However, if you have one of these SDS1104XE devices, surely you can also replicate the experiment without any problem. 
To measure the output noise, first you should remove the probe's ground lid and put the ground spring on the head. Then put the probe's tip directly on the output of the power supply. So this is the output noise of the board under no load. Let's try a 5 amps load. So I set the DC load on CC and enter 5 amps as the current. Let's turn on the output and check the output noise. So this is the output noise of the power supply under a 5 amps load. Let's apply the 16 points averaging and check the noise again. And there we go. Okay, let's charge a lithium ion battery using the CC feature of the power supply. There are two options to adjust the CC, using a DC load or using a multimeter in the current measurement setting. Turn the V potentiometer of the power supply board to set the voltage on 4.2. Then set the CC value of the DC load on half amp. And turn on the output. Then turn the I or current potentiometer until the red LED lights up. That's it. Put the multimeter on the voltage measurement setting and turn the V potentiometer of the power supply to set the voltage on 4.2. Then put the multimeter on the current measurement setting and turn the I potentiometer till you read your desired value. In this example, 500 milliamps. That's it. Alright, as the final tip, I wanted to introduce this component searchengine.com website. As its name says, free access to schematic symbols, PCB footprints, and 3D models. Also, you can check the price, the component prices in a different or a variety of distributors, download the data sheets, and etc. Let me show you the homepage. All of these electronic, these electronic design and CAD software are supported. Altium, KiCad, Allegro, Proteus, and I can say all famous names are here. And this is the download statistics, um, newly added components, most popular electronic components, and etc. Let me show you how it works by an example. For example, MCP6002. Uh, this is the op amp which I used in the design. Okay, this is the search results. And I should add, if you couldn't find your component in the database, you can order it for free and the website will build the component uh, in the maximum of 48 hours. And uh, as I said, for free. So don't worry. Uh, for example, I, I like this this one. So so the second one in the search results and the uh, package is S O I C. And there we go. And from the microchip, this is a one megahertz op amp rail to rail to rail from microchip, and this is the schematic symbols symbol. I really like when. A symbol is like that. Uh, VDD is above, ground in the bottom, input and output. Very nice. And this is the PCB footprint. These three pictures pictures are for demonstration. You can download the uh, download the library from here actually. And here download the, download the data sheet and here check the stock and prices let's press and see the component prices 
in a variety of distributors. So this is Arrow, DigiQ, Avnet, Funnel, RS Components, of course Market Chip, Element 14, and you can directly directly purchase purchase the component from here. I couldn't find any website better than this. So that's a very nice tool. You can follow me and bookmark this website and anytime you can just access and use the services. Catch you next time.